Come in. Just leave the coffee, Casey. My legs are much better than his. I wasn't expecting you. I thought you'd be out checking out the Hanover estate. Precisely why I'm here. knew all about my book, chapter and verse. Now, what I want to know is, who told her about it? Sometimes, you know, I wish that you could be me, so you know how I feel. Yeah? I can't. I don't have the words to tell you. I just love you. Close that. Sometimes when we kiss, it's like your soul passes right through mine. I can't tell where you end or I begin. No end, no beginning, no time. I can't imagine being anywhere but here with you. I don't want to be anywhere else, you know that? How much more time do we have? Oh, I hope a lifetime. I need at least that much to even begin to tell you how much you mean to me. Thank you, darling, for that. But actually, I wasn't talking about lifetimes. I meant how much more time do we have now? <laughs> I really don't know. I guess that depends on the song and how Paula's divorce hearing went. Wait to call. Well, then, let's get it over with. Because I want to spend every moment with you that I possibly can. Beautiful. Clear as a bell. a bottle of your best champagne, please. Champagne? Well, I definitely approve, but what I'm afraid to ask happens at the end of this fairy tale. Then, my dear, we exchange the champagne bottles for baby bottles, and dancing till dawn gives way to feedings at 4 a.m. Tyler, <laughs> I, I want you to know I adore all this. Mm -hmm. When the baby comes, I'm sure you'll not going to lose any of the romance. For the passion. Is that a promise? That's a promise. Ah, speak up, Ronnie. It would be fascinated to hear your theory as to how Myrna found out about my book. Uh, Mrs. Denning, believe me, uh, no one is more sorry or embarrassed about this than I am. And you're right. Uh, I am possessed. You are? Yes, I hold myself completely responsible. I knew I should have said something about it the other day. When we were at Mario's and you made such a public display about handing the manuscript over to Mr. Sinclair. But at the time, you were so excited and I just didn't think it was my place to say anything. About what? Well, I was concerned because Mario's is such a public place. And after always warning me that Craig's had ears everywhere. Now, anyone could have overheard us. You know, friend of Myrna's, uh, some reporter like Vera Sweet. That's a very interesting theory, Ronnie. But it doesn't explain how Myrna knew details, characters, specific plot points. I wasn't giving a public reading of my novel. Uh, maybe it was someone in Mr. Sinclair's office. 
You know, someone who could have read it, uh, even copied it. <laughs> I can think of a dozen ways that Mr. Craig would have found out about the book. But I swear, Mr. Jenny, I wasn't one of them. What would I possibly have to gain? Lonnie, can you please excuse us? I'd like to speak with my mother alone. Yes, of course. I don't know who to trust anymore. Especially after Myrna's performance today. My best friend! I mean, I cannot believe that she betrayed me like that. Not after all. You feel all betrayed, Mother? I cannot believe you went ahead and wrote that book. Oh, just don't you start blowing after Not after all I've suffered through. You, you promised, Trey, that you'd drop it. You burned the book right in front of him. Now, I want you to call your publisher right away and get that manuscript back. Oh, oh for God's sake, calm down. The novel is not at the publisher. Austin has it. Mm -hmm. And believe me, there is absolutely nothing of any consequence to you and Trey in well, that I, book. I think I'd better be the judge of that, Mother, because obviously something Myrna either read or heard was that enough to make her turn on you in court. And I want to know what it was. I cannot believe that you are judging me without one word uh, in my own defense. You haven't even read my book, and if you did, you would be ashamed of the way you're treating me. Not only have I lost my husband and my best friend today, but now my own daughter is accusing me of betraying. I'll get it. Hello. Trey. Hi. Hi. Uh, how'd it go? Not too well, at least for my mother. Uh, honey, I need to talk to you. Did something happen? I'll tell you when I see you. Uh, can you meet me at Mario's in about uh, half an hour? You're not upset. I am. I am, but I can't talk about it right now. All right, I'll get there as quickly as I can. Okay? Bye. Mother, I am going to go meet Trey. I will see you later. And when, and when I do, I want to see that man. You have to leave right now. Yep. Apparently something went wrong at the hearing. The phone needs to see me. I'm sorry. It always seems like I'm leaving you. No, it's just as hard for you. It's harder. I don't have to go to lie to somebody that I care Don't ever feel sorry for me. If I choose to be here, it's only because I want to. And all the pains that goes along with all the goodbyes. It's nothing. You hear me? Nothing. Compared to how I feel when I come back. Not gonna last, is it? Did I change your mind about telling Sloan? Well, whether I tell her or not, I think she's gonna find out. The lies are wearing thin. And then all hell will break loose. Yeah, probably. Listen, this is a, a difficult time for you, and it's gonna get worse before it's gonna get better. But don't expect me to uh, give you up without a fight, because I can't do that. I love you too much. I don't ever want us to give up. I gotta go. I know. Um, just call me when you can. if I didn't think it was important. I need to talk to you about Hal. What is it? Is he all right? But for now, he's holding his own. His condition has not changed. But a decision has to be made about his future. Well, if it isn't urgent, uh, would you mind if we didn't talk about this over the phone? All right, but we need to talk about this. Um... Could you come out here? I'm going to be working here all day tomorrow, if that's convenient. No, tomorrow's no good. How about tonight? If I'm not interrupting anything. I'm here with Scotty. Come anytime you like. All right, I'll be out in a little bit then. 
On first glance, this looks like a first-class copy. And on second glance. I'm impressed. Did you do it yourself? Thanks, but my claim to fame isn't paying me for that. Well, you think it'll work? Only if this fake organ is good enough to fool Larry Hanover. It's very good. Besides, Hanover is not going to suspect a switch. That's all I needed to hear. When do you plan to make your move? Tonight. And if I'm lucky, the original will be in your bedroom tomorrow. Who is it? Dennis Small, I need to talk to you. Just a minute. Do you mind taking that glove? No, if you just keep this until I need it. Doesn't go with what I'm wearing. Of course. Miss Blake. Good luck. Sloan. Oh, what a pleasure, as always. This is not a social call, Mr. Diamond. I'm meeting my husband here for dinner. But before I do, there's something I would like to straighten out. By all means, Timothy. I'd rather not get too comfortable, if you don't mind. That always seems to get me in trouble with you. I'm glad to know. Then why didn't you tell me that the apartment in New York was yours? Why the champagne? Why all the pretense to make me feel at home? You know, you must think very little of me. On the contrary, I think very highly of you, Sloan. I always have. As I recall, we were having a wonderful time. At least, that's what you led me to believe. Now, if I'd have told you about the apartment in New York, would you have let me stay? What do you think? I'm not sure. It's your unpredictable nature I find so charming. Well, let me enlighten you. If I, if I had known the apartment was yours, I never would have set foot in it. See, I don't appreciate being set up, and that's exactly what you were doing. And here I thought we were just having a good time. Does your husband know about our little housewarming? Of course. Well, I'll be the soul of discretion. Far be it for me to cast a shadow on your perfect life. Anything else? Yes, yes. Tenant landlord relations being what they are, I'm giving final notice. I will be out of your apartment bag and baggage as soon as I get back to New York. You are happy, aren't you? Happy? Happy? There should be another word for the way I feel. These past few weeks seem like a bad dream compared to what we have and what we have to look forward to. And no one deserves it as much as we do, right? No one. You know what I think? I think you deserve it even more, don't you? Absolutely. Like what? <laughs> what? Like a cruise to the Caribbean. Honey, are you crazy? We can't take a vacation right now with the baby coming. Right now is precisely the time we need to take some vacation. Before the baby arrives. Close your eyes. Close my eyes. Come what on. are you going to do? Close them. Okay. Okay. Now imagine four nights, just like this one. Balmy breezes, starry nights, walking on the beach, making love. Oh. Time, Julie, just for us. Oh, no. I worry you can't be here. That's not nice. We're in a hurry to get ready and a lot of things to do. We're going to have plenty of time to get the nursery in order and give our baby a proper welcome. Oh, what about the committee? I mean, you just got back. The committee's going to let you go? The committee can wait. Julie, whenever you and I ever want to have time together, something always comes up and messes it up. I mean, look at our... our, our who even got here last Hey, this kid, I forgot. Well, I didn't forget. Julie, what I'm trying to say is, it seems as though something always gets in the way of the most important thing in our lives. Us. And I don't want anything like that to ever happen again. I think you're right. No, I know you're right. It just seems like so many times in the past. What? You wanted me to be there, but I wasn't. No, that's not what I mean. Well, I think it's true, Julie. And no more than life is too short. I mean, I don't want to wake up 30 or 40 years from now and, and regret all the times that I could have spent with you but didn't. Come to the Caribbean with me.
What can I get for you, Congressman? Well, nothing right now, Casey. Is my wife here yet? I believe she's in the office with Mr. Diamond. Thank you. Oh, excuse me, officer. Sorry. It's my fault. I admit I was a little nervous about recommending Mario to our first evening after. And why is that? Oh, it just seemed a little tame for Leo and Hannah over Bon Vivant, extraordinaire. You know, not what they used to. Something tells me that no evening spent in your company could ever be classified as tame, Sharon. Thank you. How do you know what I'm used to? I mean, well, that you from the hall, and then you know, start the start collection, the entire state seems to be selected to so, Wow. An appetite for good living and an appreciation for beautiful things. In that case, I hope you won't be offended if I include you among the things that I admire. Not at all. tell you one thing that I do regret. What's that? I read about your father's Japanese rock garden on the inside. I don't know if I can see it. A wish easily granted. Charity, if you have lunch with me tomorrow, I'll take you on the nickel to a person. Thank you for seeing me on such short notice. You know how busy you are? Well, thank you for coming out here. It sounded serious. I didn't want to talk about how over the phone, Tom. Kelly Hell wants to come home. That's not a good idea. The other night when he left the hospital room for a little while, he collapsed. Well, it's not a question of what I think is best. It's what he wants. Kelly, Hal is dying of pneumonia. Continued treatment prolong his life, but it'd be marginal at best. I happen to. Agree with Hal in this case. But the question of the quality of the time that he has left is important. Uh, he needs to be with the people that he loves. I know. It's not even open for discussion, okay? This is his home. He belongs here. Except before you commit to this, Kelly, I think you should be aware that he's going to need continuous care. The condition's going to get worse, not better. You don't think I can handle it? That's not that. Just that, um, under the circumstances, I didn't know if you'd want to take it on. Under what circumstances? Oh. Huh. I see. You're wondering if I want Hal around while I'm having my affair with Trey. Is that it? Yeah. It's all crossed my mind. I'm not judging you, Kelly. I'm just trying to decide what's best for Hal. Of course I want Hal. Scotty and I are his own family. And I will do the very best I can to make sure that he is comfortable and well cared for. Fine. When can he leave? Whenever you're ready. You tell Hal I'll pick him up tomorrow. I'll give him your love. I wish you'd reconsider. I hate the thought of that apartment just sitting there, empty, night after night. I kind of got used to the idea of you being there. Oh, I bet, and I'm sure you... It is way... Richmond's wife living in another man's apartment. Would that be... Are you in time for that to I wish you'd learn to trust me. Trey. Hi, darling. I, um... I was just telling Mr. Diamond, and I decided to give up the, the apartment. Really, I was just thinking about buying it myself. Assuming we can persuade Mr. Diamond. So, I'm surprised you'd want it. Why? It's an exceptional apartment and a very convenient neighborhood. It's probably the best New York dealer I've ever seen. It also turned out to, to be a very lucky place for him. Very special. Why don't you keep on renting? You still have two years on the lease. Because I'd like to know what is mine. What's really mine. All right. You make me a reasonable offer, Alistair. Uh, 
is it fake? Well, I am surprised there's many years to search for I'm sure I can find something equally exceptional just around the corner. That's usually the case. Why don't you sit down? I'm sure I have the papers here somewhere. Of course, you'll have to be approved by the board, but considering who you are, I'm sure that won't be any trouble. I noticed you were borrowing that before. Yeah, I had one. Just like it when I was a kid. Don't always buy it too much. I'm not the partner. 